Nearly a decade ago, a man's fantasy became reality in a form never seen before, Kitchen Stadium, a giant cooking arena. The motivation for spending his fortune to create Kitchen Stadium was to encounter new original cuisines, which could be called true artistic creations. On a cuisine! To realize his dream, he started choosing the top chefs of various styles of cooking. And he named his men the Iron Chefs, the invincible men of culinary skills. Iron Chef Japanese is Roksaburo Michiba. Iron Chef French is Hiroyuki Sakai. Iron Chef Chinese is Chen Kenichi. And Masahiko Kobe is Iron Chef Italian. Kitchen Stadium is the arena where Iron Chefs await the challenges of master chefs from all over the world. Both the Iron Chef and Challenger have one hour to tackle the theme ingredient of the day, using all their senses, skills, creativity, there to prepare artistic dishes never tasted before. And if ever a Challenger wins over the Iron Chef, he or she will gain the people's ovation and fame forever. Every battle, reputations are on the line in Kitchen Stadium, where master chefs pit their artistic creations against each other. What inspiration will today's challenger bring? And how will the Iron Chef fight back? The heat will be on! If memory serves me right, the total population of Japanese cuisine chefs in Japan reaches half a million. There is a book that all chefs of Japanese culinary arts read through. A book written by the master of masters, worshipped as the god of Japanese cuisine, the legendary Chu Shinoshima. As a historian, he systematically analyzed the evolution of all recipes. Mr. Shinoshima is a great man with a rather intimidating presence. He is so discerning about food. When he speaks, people listen. Among the many chefs the discerning Shinoshima trained personally, we found one chef, the only chef who received the approval from the Grandmaster to open his own establishment. That is today's challenger, Shinoshima's top apprentice, owner and chef of Hashimoto, Kunihiko Hashimoto. Hashimoto was taken under Shinoshima's wing when he was 21 and started training at Shinoshima Institute of Japanese Cuisine. Many heirs of top Japanese restaurants around Japan were there to learn the heart and soul of Japanese food under the Grand Master's strict instructions, a training ground for the elite. Shinoshima quickly recognized Hashimoto's talents and granted him the opportunity to absorb the skills and knowledge needed to prepare Japanese food. But in his seventh year of training, a turning point in Hashimoto's career becomes imminent. I got tired of repeating traditional formalities, so I was determined to be on my own, to explore some new styles of cooking. And surprisingly, Shinoshima approved Hashimoto's wish to go independent, to fly with his own wings and explore his own world. Hashimoto's reputation spread quickly as the flag bearer of the new wind of Japanese cuisine. His dishes incorporate ingredients that were foreign to Japanese food, experimental, yet with a solid background of traditional training from the Grand Master himself, he prevails. The Kitchen Stadium proudly welcomes the pioneer and forebearer of Neo-Japanese cuisine. So now, Hashimoto, do justice to your master's ways, who made you what you are. Fly with your own wings and show us who you are. Well, winning or losing, it's not that important. I, uh, I just want to make dishes that speak of my personality and policies.
Today's challenger, a leader of the neo-Japanese cuisine movement, after having been a top apprentice in the traditional school, with us in traditional attire is actress Miyuko Takata. Nice to be here. Kimono today, very yes. lovely. Also with us is our commentator, Dr. Yukio Hattori Doc. Always a pleasure. All right, let's bring on Chairman Kaga. しのじま中彼自らが弟子たちの中でもピカイチと絶賛する料理人がやってまいりましたしかし本人は伝統ばかりを追い求める日本料理に嫌気がさし篠島中から学び取った技で普通の晩ご飯を作っているような天才肌の
And when the theme was unveiled, Iron Chef, pretty vacant expression. Yeah, he was not uh, not a happy camper. No. And one of the reasons is this is uh, too much of an everyday common ingredient, really. The chefs are going to have to be very creative to make them into one of their good-looking, high-class, gourmet academy-level dishes here. Well, we normally eat taro just boiled, and we put a bit of salt on oh, taro. Right. Yeah. It's and, quite uh, good. Not bad to have that with a little sake, too. Right, half the skin being peeled off. A yeah. flask in front of you with that. Okay, challenge Hashimoto now, a man who feels liberated from the school of traditional Japanese. Yeah, he's different from some of the others I've seen here. Doesn't even look like a chef with <laughs> no, that uh, right. build, hair pulled back, and a ponytail and all. Yeah. You know, it looks more like a jazz musician or something, <laughs> you know? I mean, put a sax in his hands, you, you're you looking at Sadao Watanabe blowing free <laughs> and easy. And the man right there, look at that, really rinsing those Sato Imo. Yeah, well, they're very sticky to, to handle, and that uncooked, sticky, I guess, juice-like substance would be a thing to call it, they can actually cause some irritation to some okay. people, lips, size, things like that. So the key to preparing the potatoes is to take thick pieces. Cut in deep. Surface. Exactly. All right, now to Chen here and chopping up some chicken. Uh, a soup, I imagine. Okay, got that one split. Oh, ooh, good yeah. chop there. <laughs> Last few battles, most of Chen's highlights have come near the end. Exactly, right up to uh, the very end, he's just been preparing things and hustles. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now the challenger, yes, you can see the ones already peeled, and he is really cut into them deep. Yeah, this style is called ropo, or cutting into a hexagon. All right. Yeah, they're, he's trying to create just a, the whole thing in a hexagon type of, of uh, scenario there. Oh. Technically, including the top and bottom, it'll be an octagon, but oh, octagonal. It, it's, okay. it's, it's, it's called ropo. Any cultural significance? I don't think so, but it's pretty much a basic. All the chefs know this. Exactly. Yeah. All right, now Chen cooking these. Oh, uh, I think wow. that's just hot water, isn't it? Just boiling them. I, I think. All right, boiling away right there. He just dumped them in as is, right? Got him in the early going. A lot of them there. <laughs> Almost uh, 30, it looks like. <laughs> At least, yes. Around there, yeah. I just dumped them all in. <laughs> all right, just grab them, <laughs> throw them in. I really don't know what I'm going to make. <laughs> it also buys a little time, right? Thinking about what he might do with them, end up doing with them. Fukuzan. From the floor, Shinichiro to go. Thank you. As you mentioned in the beginning, Iron Chef Chen made a big sigh of frustration when the ingredient was announced. Then he said, oh, man, I guessed wrong. I wasn't even close. What am I going to do? He has to rethink his whole approach. All right. Well, that look he had. It said it all. Why are you giving me these? You could, you could see that's what he was thinking. This is going to be fun. F fun? Oh boy. And under the gun. <laughs> now on the other side, Hashimoto, look at this, a pen to paper. Is he hmm. making a memo to himself or something? Let's see or? if we can make out some of that. Uh, avocados? Yeah, and some eggs and sauce. Looks like a menu, I'd say. Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Taro with, is it peanuts? No, I think that's pita. Oh, I pita. think he's okay. written yeah, yeah. Well, right, which, which is a Chinese ingredient, right, if I'm not mistaken. Right, black goose eggs. And uh, would Japanese chefs normally be conversant <laughs> using that ingredient? You don't normally see that put into play with <laughs> Japanese right, chefs. But no. That's what one might expect coming from this neo-Japanese cuisine chef. And I guess he's trying to add a bit of a Chinese touch Fukuzan. against Chen. All right, yes. Challenger Hashimoto has gathered together the following ingredients so far. The list includes avocados, prawns, wasabi, and butter, among other Sounds things. Sounds good. Avocados. And Fukuzan, yes. that list just it keeps getting longer and longer. Yes. This is what you were talking about. He also has piton eggs and Tim and John sauce. Wow. Wow. Hey, he's stepping into my turf. Hear that? <laughs> Chen reacting to word that Hashimoto's going with Tianmin John. Hey, I'm the one who's supposed to be using that around here. <laughs> so far, the Iron Chef being kept off balance in this battle. And now uh, that's a provocative move by Hashimoto. Hope he knows what he's doing. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> yeah. Fukuzan. Go ahead. I asked the challenger what he thinks about today's theme, Taro, and he said, in a word, difficult. It's almost too plain. It really is going to be tough trying to make luxurious and fancy dishes out of these. All right. Well, both sides are in agreement on that. Now the Iron Chef here mixing that up in the bowl. What's mm -hmm. that? Any idea? Uh, not here, nope. <laughs> Fukuzan? Yes? I have that. Uh, here in this bowl, the Iron Chef has pork that has been flavored with soy sauce, sesame seed oil, eggs, pepper, and cornstarch. All right. Oh, okay, so he's planning to do some deep frying well, with that. Not mm -hmm. planning, doing it right now. And oh, what about the taro? Uh, well, that, I imagine, will be added later. Not in here now? I don't believe so, no. Fukuzan? Yes? Yeah, one more quick thing. I asked Iron Chef Chen about the challenger's mentor, Master Chef Chu Shinoshima, and he replied, who doesn't know that name? He's a giant in Japanese cuisine, but I'm of a different genre, so that doesn't pressure me too much. I just do my own thing. I have my own style. <laughs> All right. Shinoshima's got the name, but Hashimoto's got a different game. And the challenger here... And he's uh, still peeling the potatoes, taking a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, and he's still dealing with the skin there. <laughs> We're about 20 minutes in. He'd better step up Get his... Get on uh, with it, yeah. You know, <laughs> at most restaurants, this type of KP is... Um, well, it's it's for uh, the younger ones, yeah. Yes, right, yes. He's been uh, hands-on, literally. Yeah, he's not letting anybody else near it. 
No, and gotta remember the uh, chairman's tip. Let the younger apprentices do the peeling. That's right. Oh, it's so, looking good. Yeah, I think it's Taro in there. Be flavoring them probably at the end. Yeah, this will be hot and spicy, oh, I imagine. Of course, and that one with chicken meat in it too. It looks pretty much every day in style, but with these guys, it's going to taste so good. Okay, now the Iron Chef over a wok with hot bean paste, I believe. Yeah, it's uh, Tobanjan and a bit of Ten Man John okay, as well. Okay, look at its sizzle. Oh, it's made from flour. Oh boy, look at really <laughs> bringing the fire. Man alive, look at that. Flammable action early in this one. Let me come into your fire, Iron Chef Chen. That's made from flour. Oh boy, really <laughs> bringing go. the fire. Man alive, look at that. Flammable action early in this one. Let me come into your fire, Iron Chef Chen. You talk about bringing it. Here it is on replay. He's got a scorched walk <laughs> policy today. <laughs> that Get is the one flavoring major agent together with the, for his first dish there. <laughs> oh, he's uh, he's adding some stuff here. Okay, into the hot and spicy one. Yeah. Oh, okay, he added some spirits with the hot and spicy uh -huh. stuff as well, I think. Uh, and cognac. Yes, a okay. cognac going in as well. Chicken, cognac, and taro. Oh, just some good old fashioned home cooking from the Iron Chef. <laughs> yeah. Fukuzan? <laughs> yes. I asked Iron Chef Chen how many dishes he has in mind today, and he confided in me saying, you know, I'd like like to do a dessert if I have time, but right now, let's see, excluding the dessert, I'm thinking of maybe three dishes. All right, set of three and dessert if possible. That's what Chen is shooting for, dessert with taro. How about that? Yeah, interesting. Well, it's possible, you know, with this kind of potato, I think it's possible. All right, we shall see. And now Challenger Hashimoto slicing the boiled prawns and slicing them in half right down the middle. Very delicate touch over there being exhibited by this chef. He's so careful in handling the ingredients. Yeah, he's very careful, very delicate, just like he uh, he treats his women. Oh, that's very romantic. <laughs> Such a gentleman. He's already winning hearts, huh? <laughs> At least one. Fukuzan? Yes. I put the same question to the challenger, and he says he wants to do five dishes, including a dessert. He says five is the most logical number when you consider that that is a full course meal. Back to All you. All right. Interesting comment there. That sounds like something he got from his, uh, from his master, always presenting things as a full course meal. All right. And now, in this case, that'd be five. He seems to be, you know, living in his own world right now. He's like meditating like a monk. Definitely <laughs> seems like he's in his own world. World, cooking to his own beat. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, I don't think he'd be bothered if we said, hey, time's running out, hurry up. <laughs> I know, he just seems so focused, doesn't he? He's not panicked at all. Everything has been so methodical and slow. Yeah. Now, is this a croquette? I think oh, so. Yeah. Okay. So, the avocados? Would well, I think else? he did, did have a, a croquette on his menu. But not really a large volume, though, for a croquette, is it? Okay, and this is taro in here, correct? Oh, yeah, some, some mashed taro. Right, he's added anchovies to it. Almost looks like regular potatoes, doesn't it? Like a potato salad. <laughs> okay, meantime, Iron Chef here and some pretty clean looking taro right there in that bowl. Uh, these are boiled. And yes, you can barely catch the steam coming off and now adding this, the... Um, uh, the pork he was frying okay, before. Oh, deep fried pork. Oh, little pork bits. And okay. they are loaded in. <laughs> Iron Chef's side, they're shooting for three dishes plus a dessert and look here, it's a soup. Oh, soup, okay. Wow. That means we've got two of Chen's dishes that we're up to snuff on, and now Hashimoto, this uh -huh. into ice water? Oh, uh, yeah, he's, he's dipping them in there. Fukuzan? Okay. Yes. Yeah, let me tell you what this is that uh, he's rolling up and placing into ice water. It's a mix of cheese, anchovies, and butter, but there's no taro in that yet. No taro in there? Not yet, okay. as far as I know. All right, hmm. interesting. Okay, we stand corrected. No taro in that one, and now the Iron Chef and the white liquid. Could that uh, possibly yeah. be milk? I think he's got milk. Yeah, he put that in. Okay, mashed taro with milk in the wok. Yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to imagine he'd be Fukuzan. making another Cooking soup. that one up, yeah. yes. I'm told this is a blend of milk and coconut milk. All right, got okay. it. Coconut milk. No taro, sorry, that one's on me. All right, well, there will be some, of course. <laughs> I would think so. <laughs> he was boiling some earlier. No, no, wait a minute, what's this? What's not, is, not no, right no, there in the yeah, processor. Yeah, no, okay. We know none there. No, I thought he was going to add that, but we'll yes, wait. yes, he did add milk to the taro in the blender. But so far, the mix in the wok is just milk and coconut milk. All right, thanks for confirming that. Now we know. Okay, I think I know. Uh, I'm thinking about tapioca, and that's made from you know a starch, right? Well, yeah, from potatoes. Yeah. Okay. okay. And taro is also a kind of potato, so taro should fit. It, it, yeah, you're right. It should go with coconut milk. Yeah, okay. I think it should. I agree. <laughs> so I think it's going to be like tapioca and coconut milk. Then what about the the mashed ones. 
what mashed ones? In the food processor. Oh, those. Okay. That's something different, maybe? I, <laughs> I guess oh, so. Man. We're getting confused <laughs> again. No, you're confusing me, both of you. <laughs> now, Hashimoto got them lined up in formation. Oh, <laughs> right there on the cutting board, orderly. Oh, he's yeah. so different. He's, he's really fun to watch. In control, too. Every single move is precise by this mm. man. Yeah. Everything well thought out and well executed. Very yep. much so. And Hashimoto now separating these mushrooms and laying down a bed. Right, got the mushrooms, uh, enoki mushrooms. Okay, in 30 minutes gone, 30 to go, crossing the halfway point of this one. Let's oh. see. Oh, okay. Oh, did you just, he just added it in there, right? Yep. Yeah, yep. I thought so. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay, well, that does make sense now. And I thought you were going to say the opposite just a minute ago, Doc. <laughs> well, he's great at strapping. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> My butt sword, I'm sitting on this fence. <laughs> All right, now back to challenger Hashimoto here. Okay, using Tianmen John, right? Right here, right now, Tianmen John. I do believe so. Don't confuse it with seaweed. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yes. Yes, that is right. It is Tianmen John sauce. All right, okay. and encroaching okay, on Chen's territory <laughs> with the Chinese ingredient. Right, yeah. So that's like miso. I mean, it's it's kind of sweet, and it's it's also made from flour, right? So. Well, you know, Hashimoto prefaced his selection of Chen as the Iron Chef he'd battle by saying Chinese cuisine is the world's best, and uh, hmm. interesting to see how this Japanese cuisine chef uses the Chinese mm. ingredient, how right. that will turn out. Now, here are their croquettes. Right, yeah. But also, remember, you had the, uh, those other dumpling-like butter balls or something on ice? <laughs> what are they gonna be for? They could actually be the core. Been on ice for quite a while over there. Yeah, I think he'll put those in the center. Ah, Inside in the these. Center. Right, yeah. Okay. Is that I what see, he's gonna do? Uh, that's what I'm thinking. I think you're right, absolutely. I agree. Okay, in fact, <laughs> I know I'm right this time. Well, I'm with you, Doc, all the way. No okay. worries. <laughs> Croquettes with bulbs of cold butter in them. Well, let's see, what's, let's see what he's doing here. Now, is it advisable to chill the ingredients like this before? Especially in this case, yeah. You don't want them to melt while you're frying the Looks outside. Look, going oh, in right there. Right. Okay. Yeah, the inside could melt very, very fast. So you have to chill them and roll them up in okay. something. Okay. And looks like by the palm of his hand, applying a coat of oil. Yeah, and they're going in. Uh, mm -hmm. Got it, got it. Hang a star on that one, Doc. Uh, Victoria right. and now Chen. Oh, some shrimp, I think. Can we call these shao mai? I think so. Uh, I guess probably, yeah. Kind of like a dim sum in style, right? Yeah, good call. Exactly. Mm. Fukuzan? Yes. The mixture that the Iron Chef is working with right now is pork, lard, yes. ground prawns, stir fried taro, scallions, cornstarches in there as well. He told me that he had been aiming to make these a bit on the sweet side, but he says they ended up somewhat spicy hot instead, so go figure. <laughs> <laughs> steam, I think it would taste good either you way. You know, steam these with a sauce of soy and mustard, they'd oh. be perfect. Oh, uh, yeah. We'll just wait and see what sort of dip you'll have. All right, now back with the challenger. Ah. Looks like a dressing there. Is that wasabi? Maybe for that? a salad. Isn't it mayonnaise? He was working on this before? Oh, no? was he? This has wasabi in it, correct? I think. Uh. Fukuzan? Yes. Yeah, the ingredients in this are vegetable oil, egg yolks, salt, soy sauce, and as you've already noted, grated wasabi. Oh, okay, yeah. So it'll be a dressing. Yeah, for the avocado dish. Avocado right. and shrimp with that dish. Yeah, and now we're looking at one of his his Imagine the boiled taro will be worked into it somehow, too. I would think the so. Taro salad on the way. Right. With avocados, good combo. Yeah, and he's doing it with great care. Look at mm -hmm. that. Mm, yes. Everything under control today. No scurry, no scramble on this side. And he'll be using these for decoration as he's cutting them sideways. All right, Hashimoto, a smooth operator. Everything we've seen him do so far today. And Chen with the flip. You know, if Hashimoto were a baseball player, you'd say he's got a sweet swing. And now, <laughs> Chen, walk off. Not a walk off homer. Walk off the stove unloading this one. And look at that, the stew with taro, konyaku, chicken in there. The Iron Chef Chinese with the Japanese ingredient, konyaku, his response to the challenger's use of Tianmen John, and now here. Oh, the steaming wow, is done. Wow, another one, the steamed effort. They are looking fine right there, the shao mai from Chen. Now, what's the sauce gonna be? Well, the dip, I said right. soy sauce and mustard. I uh, actually, I, I kind of wish he had a taro based sauce or, or something along those lines. Well, we'll have to wait and see. And now on the other side, yes, the challenger finishing up one of his dishes, taro, avocado, and shrimp and the accompanying sauce, a mix of mayonnaise and wasabi, a trio of a root, a fruit, which I believe avocado is <laughs> classified as, and shrimp, seafood, and an attractive color scheme to boot with the ingredients in that one. So one dish just about done for him. Mm. Wow. Fukuzan. Yes. I'm being told that the challenger is now working with soft codro as well. All right, thanks. And now here we're looking at the soup on Chen's side. Now what did he just add in there? This is kombu kelp. Uh, kombu. Mm -hmm. 
All right, and there you hear it, 10 minutes left. Soup by the Iron Chef, looks to be a done deal there. Uh, he was making a broth with it, right? So he added that to his soup, I guess? Uh, okay, okay, so the combo will add a nice texture to it, I think. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be very similar with the texture to the taro as well. Yeah, similar textures too. Yeah. Yeah. All right, now on Hashimoto's side, a look at the contents of his earthenware pot. Taro, enoki mushrooms soaking up the soup stock, and what do you think, anything else to be added to this one? Well, when you think about it, this guy hasn't used any sort of meat or fish no, or anything. No, just the shrimp. Yeah, so, oh, he's going to be using the soft roe. Okay, the soft roe of the oh, cod, okay, and fish. it's going in okay. right there. Right, and that's from cod, right? And it looks to be basically a soy-based flavor. Yeah, this is going to be very good. All right, and the soft roe laid gently on top of that, and back with Chen, and look at this now, a second treatment. Yeah, it's, it's more frying than stirring there. But. So steamed and now being fried and uh, what about the sauce? Not sure what he's going to do with it. Can't yet. come up with that yet. I haven't got any idea, no. Ooh, they're kind of falling apart a little bit. Breaking up in the walk and whoa, pulling them by hand. They're careful. Those puppies are hot. They're sizzling. Be careful. <laughs> yes. Disappointing news. The challenger says he's going to have to give up on his dessert because of limited time. Uh, All right. Thanks. Sorry to hear that. So logic going out the window. Hashimoto so we'll have only four dishes, not the five. While the Iron Chef here, his dessert's gonna make it. Looks good. While the Iron Chef here, his dessert is gonna make it. Looks good, but I wonder what it's really gonna be like. Hmm, I mean, well. is it gonna be slimy? <laughs> <laughs> well, no. scooping it out right there, it is a liquid mixture. The taro that is in there is nothing that we'd have any experience with oh. having had before. Good point. Yeah, you you're know? right. Now, if you look at this here, he's pouring the sauce. That's the, the mayonnaise with okay. wasabi, right? Okay, that one being finished up right now. One of the assistants working under the direction of Hashimoto with the honors of laying on the sauce. And now over here, the earthenware pot. Yeah, he's got some beaten eggs that he's pouring in. Yeah, poured right on top there over the scallions wow. and hanging near the surface. They will cook right there. So that's a second dish, which is just about in the books from the Challenger. Lid now on top of that low heat. Okay, now what's going on in the pan there? Five Don't know about go. that, but do know there are five minutes left in the Taro battle. The Challenger, Kunihiko Hashimoto, a man who's broken away, now doing things his way when it comes to Japanese cuisine against Iron Chef Chinese Chen. And looks like he's added scallions to his as well on this side. Right, and that would be for aroma. And a delectable looking delight Iron Chef plating that now on the challenger side. This is like Dengaku style. Mm -hmm. It's a miso based sauce. Thing. Also with Tianmen John as the sauce poured on over lightly fried taro. Right, what we call Dengaku. Style. Dengaku yep. style, but with Chinese miso. <laughs> yeah. Well, technically, yes. So a Chinese <laughs> approach by the challenger. Well, still Japanese in my book. Okay, you make the call on that one. <laughs> now, is this going to be sweet? Not that sweet, but uh, on the other hand, it's not going to be exactly really spicy okay, or anything hey, either. Hey, check this out. The challenger has yet to fry his croquettes less than five minutes. Yeah, he's got to hurry. How much time did you say? Closing in on four minutes. Well, four minutes is probably enough for that. Yeah, yeah, he should be okay. And he'll want to serve them warm anyway. And the taro inside has been cooked once already. Well, he's got a load of them over there, though. Yeah, that uh, shouldn't be a problem for him there. I think it should be okay. Yeah. Think so? I think so. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not the one cooking. Well, that's for sure. <laughs> now, croquettes, you got to be doing them on a strong okay. plate anyway, like almost 200 degrees Celsius. All right, now this, a base, basic approach here, but it looks good. Yeah, this uh, this one won't disappoint anyone. With more than just a hint of a Chinese flavor with the Tianmen John sauce. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Is he starting to fry it? Okay, kerplunk, and there they go, and a shade over three minutes left now. High heat's what the doctors ordered, and still think he may come up against it time-wise with this one. Now on the other side, the Iron oh, Chef. Look. This is his dessert. Ah, uh, taro. And adding pieces of taro. Hukuzan? Yes. Yeah, the taro pieces that Chinsan is adding to this have been boiled in sweetened hot water. Well, this oh, one's really right. going to be a sweet okay. dessert. Okay, so he's just making sure everything is sweet for this. <laughs> All right, now check it out. Look at this. He is adding, it looks like uh, some kind of fruit, papayas uh, maybe? I think it's actually mangoes, to be honest. Okay, mangoes, even sweeter. Mm, yes, definitely mangoes. All right, and that also adds another color twist to it as well. And visually very appealing, too. Mm. Really Iron mm. Chef get going to town on his dessert. He spent a lot of time on that one. And Chen, again, theme challenge today. 
He's had his work cut out for him. He's really put his nose to the grindstone. Clock showing less than two minutes now. Hashimoto getting the croquettes out of there and out of that pot of hot oil on his stove. My concerns were misplaced. The challenge is going to have those finished in no time. <laughs> Looks like taro, but there's a treat inside. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you wouldn't know looking at it, though. No, that's for sure. <laughs> nice golden brown color. The croquettes are finished, and they look fantastic. And a minute to go now. The final 60 seconds, both Hashimoto and Chen make Hey, today with this ordinary theme ingredient, Sato Emo Taro, successfully transforming the theme in some exciting dishes and now pulling back, getting a shot of the dishes on Hashimoto's side. You can see elements of a number of different cuisines. He's got Japanese, Chinese, French, almost in effect taking on the stable of the Gourmet Academy's Iron Chefs today. He's had to drop his plans for dessert, but his other dishes, he's done a heck of a job. 30 seconds left in the battle now. and. The challenger is still on to something else. Huh? While Chen sweating like crazy, the Iron Chef was shooting to complete five dishes. Don't know if he's got them all done yet. And now, wh is what? he trying to huh? get a last one? What? Onion or Sato Emo that he's grating over the pot? I can't believe it. No way. Ten seconds, Ten seconds left. Obviously trying to get something done here, but no way can he get this finished. It's not going to happen. The final seconds are ticking down in this battle. Chen versus Hashimoto, and that's it. The cooking's done. The Taro battle is over. What happened yeah, at the well, end? I was trying to make a sauce. Uh -huh. This it, it can be enjoyed without one, but oh. uh, I was planning to make a sauce if, well, if I had the oh, time. Oh, for the croquettes, yes. you mean? They're flavored to, well, to be enjoyed. Already flavored? And this, well, in fact, this can go without a sauce. Okay. Yes. Are you confident? Uh, I'm not sure. I didn't really have enough time to watch what uh -huh. Chin was doing. Not really sure what I was up against. Okay, yeah. thank you. You're really perspiring. How was that hour? Ah, the ingredient was totally unexpected. Yeah, you said that in the oh, beginning. It was tough today, you know. Oh, what were you expecting? Huh? The ingredient. Was something totally different. Totally different. Yeah. So, you know, well, it's just that uh, uh -huh. the challenger did his training under the, the world-famous chef Shinoshima. Yes, right. I, uh -huh. I had to do everything uh, uh -huh. to, not to lose. Okay. I did my best. Challenger Hashimoto is offering four dishes. First, taro and avocado with wasabi sauce. It also has prawns. The wasabi and mayonnaise-based sauce tie all three elements together in this nice appetizer. Second, taro with Chinese black egg sauce. Long onions and scallions add aroma and texture to the thick sauce made from Chinese sweet miso paste and black eggs. Third, taro and cheese croquette. Although he didn't have enough time to prepare a sauce, come on, bear cheese and anchovies add depth to the overall flavor. Last, taro and soft roe omelet. The taro featured in this stewed dish has completely absorbed the flavor of the stock, which also has the essence of enoki mushrooms. Iron Chef Chen is also offering a set of four. First, taro and prawn dumpling. What a starter. The dumpling was first steamed, then fried. The shredded carrots, bell pepper, and scallions placed on top add extra flavoring agents. Second, taro and chicken stew, the dish taken from a Szechuan home cooking recipe. The taro is enhanced in this hot and spicy dish by absorbing the essence of chicken. Third, taro and pork soup. Tasters should be impressed by the wonderful match between pork and taro in this subtle yet striking soup. Last, taro and coconut milk dessert, another playful dessert with an unlikely ingredient. Taro stewed in coconut milk and honey made into a soup accentuated by slices of mango. Chu Shinoshima, a man worshipped as the final authority on Japanese cuisine. You train under him, you train under the best. And after seven years of training under Shinoshima, this man decided to go out on his own. Today's challenger, Kunihiko Hashimoto. He'll have a date in Kitchen Stadium with the Sejuan Sage, Iron Chef Chinese Chen Kenichi. Chairman Kaga unveiling the theme gets to the root of the matter, the sticky one, Sato Imo Taro. Challenger Hashimoto, free and easy, finishes with a set of four. Bold as ever, a sweat-soaked Iron Chef Chen brings in a quartet as well. And now, the moment of truth, tasting and judgment. On the panel today for the Taro Battle are novelist Tamio Kageyama, actress Mayuko Takata, 
and Rosanjin scholar Masaaki Hirano. First, the dishes of Challenger Hashimoto. Ah. Mm. The wasabi and the mayonnaise sauce gives a punch. Mm. Well, the texture is similar yes. to that yes, of the right. avocado. The taro's texture, I mean. That's because you slightly overboiled the taro. They are too soft, so the texture is almost the same as that as the avocado. I added the tenmen chan and the, well, the black eggs, scallions, and I threw some ginger in there too. Very nice. Um, the black eggs and the miso are blended in a mm, funny way. I mean, I like it. It's interesting. The butter and cheese inside, because you fried them perfectly. The butter and cheese have melted in such a nice way. And the flavor of cheese comes out from the vague screen of taro. It's a very interesting experience. But I do have to say this, I really wanted to have this with sauce that added one more layer of flavor on top. And now Hashimoto will serve his stewed dish. Mm, this confirms that taro is best with soy sauce. Yes, indeed. I always find myself using the soy sauce for the base, well, the base flavors when I cook this kind of potato. Very nice. It makes me feel warm inside the soft roe. <laughs> right. For us Japanese, cooked taro and soy sauce is, well, it's just, just great. Mm. This is not a restaurant's flavor. It's a dish for a warm family, perhaps reflected in your personality. You're so relaxed when making food. Yet, you still haven't dropped the teachings of your master, not to make any shortcuts in, in any way. You were doing things so methodically in there, I could see. And I was worried in the beginning, perhaps that was just your style. <laughs> but, but tasting your dishes, I see that you are so relaxed in style in the preparation of all of your dishes. So I feel very relieved now. And now up the dishes of Iron Chef Chen. Mm. The aroma is nice. And you know, it has a very firm texture, which is unexpected from this potato. This dish has accomplished that. Yes, it's firmer than the prawns. It, it's so savory. I, I like this very much. The flavors are well orchestrated and very good. Thank you. Konyaku. You use this in Chinese food? Oh, yes, we do in Sichuan cooking. A, a lot? lot? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm, it's hot. <laughs> it's too hot. No, I'm sorry. This is great. It's good. Mm. This taro in texture is very much like sweet potatoes baked on hot stones. As you know from your experience, Konyaku and Taro are just like brothers in Japanese cuisine. So I guess we can call this a brother's stew. And the Taro especially here is stewed so soft and so nice. This is also an example of the Sichuan home cooking. When Japanese people use this potato, we normally put it in miso soup or other stews uh, using pork. I see a common element here. Taro fits well in soup using pork, you know. Mm. Yes, pork is best for this potato.
Mmm. I was expecting something similar to tapioca and coconut milk, but this is more gelatin-like and, you know, the mango slices are so great in this. Where do you get these ideas? A genius you are. Taro, the sticky one, will find out who avoids being stuck with the loss.我々こそは日本料理の具現者なり。朝鮮者の師匠篠島中は Today in Kitchen Stadium, a prime example of two chefs who have forged their own identities, pushing themselves to the fullest of their abilities. Challenger Hashimoto, a solid grounding in traditional Japanese, yet he's gone far beyond that. Iron Chef Chen, his credentials established long ago, showing us one of a kind taro dishes. Who takes it? Whose cuisine reigns supreme? It's the Iron Chef. Chen wins it. Using, of all things for him, taro, he's able to pull it out. Hashimoto, the Neo-Japanese flag bearer, his best, very good, but not good enough today against the Sejuan Sage. No L stuck on him. The W instead going to Iron Chef Chinese Chen Kenichi.